High school dropout rates in Massachusetts has been declining over the years, from a 3.8% in 2006 to 2007, to a 1.8% in 2016 to 2017. Though this shows progress, the truth still remains that there is still a substantial population of young adults who have not completed their fundamental education. Today we'll be visiting the city of New Bedford to learn about a national youth program that's granting second chances to population of high school dropouts. Right, so we're going to get the same denominator. Right, so if you ever need a common denominator, you can always just multiply the two numbers together. Who are the young men and women who enter through these doors? I guess they all come with the same type of baggage. So it's young people 16 to 24. And for whatever reason, the traditional school system wasn't for them. What do these youth need? Someone to believe in them. I think at its lowest base point, I think that's where it starts. How would you characterize what the youth are getting here, the skills that they're learning from youth build? I think it's more, more of an all-around education, right? So they're obviously not going to get the same amount of academic skill that they would get should they complete college, I mean high school, forgive me. Should they complete high school, they're not going to get that same academic skill that they would get preparing for their high set, right? But they're also going to get that vocational skill. They're going to get employment success training, which doesn't get taught in high schools. They don't know how to behave on a job, typically, right? They don't know how to apply for a job, don't have resumes. All of those things aren't being, so they're not being prepared for the workforce, typically, in high school, right? And they're not we also have the life skills that we're teaching. We're teaching about hygiene, we're teaching about you know, sexually transmitted diseases. Like I said, we teach a whole course on finance. We're teaching anger management. We're teaching organizational skills. All of those things that you need to be successful in the future. I think so more than just the academics that you're getting in high school, we're giving you all of those real world soft skills that you need to be successful. What is the incentive for them, apart from the bigger picture, getting your high school diploma, your GED, apart from that, what kind of incentive do you give them to make them stay here? So all of our members are also AmeriCorps members, so they do 450 hours of service in their community while they're here but that also gives them money for post-secondary education. So they can go to a trade school, they can go to college if they want. We also have access to Clemente course where they can get 12 free credits of college. So we try to get them to see the futures, the bigger picture. The Youth Build program has been around for over 20 years. It carries an 80% graduation rate, a 70% heist attainment, a 90% of its students secure national certifications in vocational training. A promising program, but yet student recruitment remains low. I think it's sad to have all of this and not have every seat full. We should have a waiting list. You're talking about you would love to have a waiting list. I know that you're reaching out to more communities. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me what communities are you reaching out to? Well, with you, hopefully we're reaching out to Wareham as well because there really isn't anything out in your neighborhood and it's just the transportation issue. But if they can get their way to New Bedford, we would love to serve them as well. Right now we do a cushion at Fairhaven, Dartmouth, Westport, and obviously New Bedford. Um, we've had kids from Mattapoiset, Marion, so Knowing that transportation impedes some people to be here, mm -hmm. uh, is that something that the, com the organization is going to invest on? Right now I don't have the ability to do that. We do offer bus tickets, but obviously that's not going to help. But I do want to, if we do get a large population from Wareham, I understand there may be some, some busing that we can look into as well. But right now I don't have the need for it, so it's not something that I've budgeted for. But I'm hoping to build that need and then cross that bridge when we get there. 
Right. right, but what's the numerator? Four. Four. And it's four sixteenths. Right? And I can connect it back to. The major problem I dropped out was like. My freshman year and sophomore year, I was in honors. I was in honors class in high school. Then, like junior year, one of my teachers like said because I wasn't doing good in class that that I shouldn't be in honors class. Hmm. So she's trying to bring me down to college. I told my guidance counselor so, like, you put me down to college, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you because like in college, we were reading the book The Odyssey. Hmm. So like we were, I would read it at home, mm -hmm. but other people in class wouldn't read it. So she would make us read the book again in class. So I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna read it at home so I can wait, so I, like entire class won't do anything, wait for people to catch up to where we are. So I stopped reading the book and she started getting mad at that. So then I stopped not showing up to class. Mm. Night school was suggested to him. However, that did not seem much of a choice, considering he has to work at night to help support his family. I live with my two sisters and my younger brother. Mm. So we all like chip in and pay the rent, all of that like bells and buy food and all of that. The classrooms here are very small. Each student is guaranteed a one-on-one -on -one attention. So we have a, um, a bunch of different metrics that we use. So the first is um, the TABE test, which is the, the test for adult basic education. So they, every 13 weeks, so once every quarter, they take the TABE test. And that, um, you know, is a test in reading, math, and uh, writing and so they score different levels and that test tells us okay well maybe they're at like an 11th grade reading level but like a 7th grade math level. Jen Reyes is the program workforce development specialist. She teaches workplace etiquette and helps students find employment. You gotta believe that when you walk in that door this is my job and like I said it's, it's not only up to the employer, it's up to you. You know, you may go into that job, and that's why I would like you to be able to internship. I would like you to, to shadow somebody to see if it's the right fit. Not everything is the right fit for everyone. No, one of the questions is, that she asked me is, you know, if a customer comes in having a bad day, how would you handle it? Well, simply as a deal with everybody else if I'm there in a bad mood and I have to stay serious in a moment of, you know, I... I've created a curriculum, and in the curriculum, I'm going to take it step by step on how to get ready for a job, how to present yourself, how to interview, how to write the right resume, the cover letter, the thank you letter. How to go into an interview and sell yourself. That's real important. What kind of business does, do students have to be handling in this program? Um, so they're in the business of changing their lives um, and taking responsibility for their actions, making sure Melissa that they are Melissa Correa is operations manager and also an alumni. Now you have walked the walk, talked the talk, now you're doing the work. Yeah. The work. Um, how do you, what message do you tell these kids? regarding if they should, why they should stay and why they should fight for themselves? Um, I think the biggest thing is, is hope, right? I think when the students come in, they're hopeless. Um, and I think or I hope that through the program, through their mentorship, that we have the ability to instill that hope in them um, so that they know that there's a huge world out there beyond New Bedford, beyond New Bedford Public Schools, um, and that that's available to them, that those opportunities are available to them, that they could be homeowners and, and they can be sitting in an office and they can help others also, that this, these things are not outside of their reach. And I hope that they can see that through me, having been a youth build student um, and now being able to be on the other side where I'm now able to mentor them and work them through the program. How hard or easy is it for you to stay in this program? Oh, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy because it's like, you, it motivates me. It's like it's a fun program to be in. It's a good program. Like, because when I was like in high school, I was a, I was a total diff, different person that I, than I'm now. Like a whole different. For the good or for, for the, the bad? Good, like, for the good. Okay. For the good. Because like, I didn't really thought about like my steps like, because when I got here, we did like this program, so, like first week, we have to do programs so of step to get you to like better in your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So like that, I never thought about stuff like that. And I they was, taught like, you them. Yeah, they taught you like those steps and all that stuff, what you need to do, what can stop you from not making it, all of that. 
so like it helps you improve as a person and like in your lifestyle. They keep going until they don't have any factors when you come. That's why when I said that we're, you know, even though this is separate from what we talk about, we're just kind of multiple various kinds of factors, right? Those ideas are both very important here, right? When we simplify, we're dividing by 